and welcome to O-Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of a pluck. A pluck is basically the lungs, heart, and liver. This one is a specimen from a sheep. We already covered the heart in a previous video, so please go to this link for more information there. In this video, we'll be focusing on the lungs with a quick look at the liver. So here is the anterior or ventral side right here, and if I flip it over, here is the posterior or dorsal side. So the heart is in the middle of the lungs, but also tilted a little to the left. If you want to take a closer look at the anatomy of the heart, watch our heart video. We'll put the link in the description below as well. Now I'll remove the heart so you can get a better look at the lungs. So just use a pair of scissors to cut around the heart. The lungs make up the mammalian respiratory system. In the time it took you to watch this video so far, your respiratory system has kept you healthy and breathing without you even noticing. Every breath we take is a testament to the amazing ways our body functions in harmony. The lungs are no exception. The lungs' primary function is gas exchange, taking in oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide. Exhaling is just as important as inhaling. Without breathing back out, your body would retain too much dangerous CO2, which builds up in your blood as an acid. In fact, not being able to hold your breath for too long has more to do with the buildup of blood acidifying carbon dioxide than the lack of oxygen, which your body stores in muscle proteins called myoglobin. The lungs take in oxygen and removes carbon dioxide, but that oxygen and carbon dioxide needs to be carried by the blood, which is pumped by the heart. This is why you can find the lungs and heart in close proximity. You saw before that the heart is right here, just between the lungs. They're all normally kept within your rib cage for protection. So now let's take a look at some of the structures. So these two tubes here are the esophagus and the trachea. The esophagus leads to the digestive system, while the trachea here leads to the lungs. Now let's take a look at the trachea. It's already been cut, so you can see these rings of hard cartilage. You can also see it here. And these rings of cartilage are necessary to prop the trachea open and ensure a clear passageway for air at all times. You can feel these as well. If you press against the front of your throat, you can feel the rings. The esophagus here doesn't have these because you don't need it to be open all the time. Now inside, the lining of the trachea would normally be covered in white foamy stuff called mucus. It's been removed here because this one is preserved. The mucus serves to protect your lungs from infection and dehydration. However, too much mucus can also make it harder to breathe or make the lungs more vulnerable to infection. Now I'll remove the esophagus to get a better look at the trachea. Now I'm going to cut further into the trachea. Now, further in, you can see that the trachea splits into two bronchi, as you can see here. Each bronchus leads into one lung. These bronchi then split further and further until the smallest passageways, called the bronchioles, lead into microscopic air sacs called alveoli. Think of it like an upside down tree. Together, the lungs contain approximately 2,400 kilometers of airways, that's the distance from Chicago to Las Vegas, and 300 to 500 million alveoli. Now let's look at the two lungs, right here. Human lungs are not symmetrical, and neither are sheep lungs. If you always picture two lungs that mirror each other, you are wrong. The right one here is actually slightly larger than the left one here. You're designed like this to make space for the heart, which is around here, and remember, tilt slightly to the left. The lungs are very spongy tissue, as you can see here. It's filled with blood and air bubbles. In fact, instead of thinking of your lungs as big balloons, think of your lungs as sponges soaked in blood. The lungs actually hold so much residual air that they're the only organs in the human body that are capable of floating on water. Now that we're done with the lung, I'm just going to cut right into the lungs to see if we can see any of the airways. Now 
so you can see that it looks like Swiss cheese or a sponge. These holes would be the cross section of the bronchioles in the lung. So here's another section of the lungs where you can see the bronchioles better. Interestingly, just like the kidney, you can't live with just one lung. It might limit your physical ability, but it doesn't stop you from living a relatively normal life. Below the lungs is a section of the diaphragm right here. The diaphragm is the primary muscle used in respiration. It's very tough as you can see here. It feels like well done steak. And it's a sheet of muscle. When you breathe, the diaphragm contracts, like this, creating more space inside the body cavity and thus lowering the pressure in the lungs. This causes air to rush in through your throat, like that. This is called negative pressure breathing. Your diaphragm is a crucial organ because you wouldn't be able to breathe without it. In fact, the diaphragm is the only organ which only and all mammals have, and without which no mammals can live. Now below the diaphragm is this structure, which is the liver. This is only part of the liver, the whole liver is actually much larger. The liver is made out of glandular tissue, which you can see has a kind of crumbly texture. So you can see it crumbles apart. The liver is an organ only found in vertebrates and it performs various tasks, such as detoxifying various metabolites, synthesizing proteins and producing biochemicals necessary for digestion and growth. The liver also has the incredible ability to completely regrow, and it only needs as little as 25% of the original tissue to do so. Right, that's the end of the plot dissection. Thanks for staying, lads. Here's a fun fact about lungs to send you on your way. Because of the lungs' enormous surface area and the large number of blood vessels in it, whatever you inhale quickly goes from your lungs to the brain. In fact, it only takes 7 seconds. So be careful with whatever you breathe in and don't smoke. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe for more.